Shot of Tom there is so good to see, by the way. Um, to Tom Mori, everybody. We, uh, yeah, we lost, we lost uh, someone special. I, I, my vote is that Tom Mori should be uh, given the Pulitzer Peace Prize for <laughs> everything that he's given. And uh, if you probably notice his voice is in the movie, and it's just a, uh, it's just a beautiful, indelible mark left on the movie. Without further ado, let's bring out um, uh, Laguna Legends in their own. <laughs> uh, Hans Hagen. Uh, yeah, Nathan Affel. Um, Eric, can we get you up here? Frog. Eric Nelson, everybody. Yeah. Oh, got a little, little teary when I saw <laughs> Tom there. Uh, I, it's funny, we were watching this movie, and a uh, little backstory too. Um, when this movie, when I, back when I was doing The Daily Habit with Fuel TV, hey buddy, um, which was a, a TV channel back in the day, back in the early, uh, early 2000s, they came on and we, we showed the movie, and it was such, it was such a cool movie then, I, but I just, as we were watching, I'm like, wow. This thing is aged really well. So um, bravo to that. What'd you guys think of the movie? Great, right? I think, Nate, I think you're, you're, you were saying maybe it's time for Lost Profits too, right? Is that? Well, yeah, I feel like the message <laughs> is more clear than ever in regards to, uh, I don't know, just searching for what's relevant in life. So much clutter. Yeah, it's uh, what we've been coming to the same party for uh, for 40 years, and in no way is that depressing, right? <laughs> I, I'm definitely ready. <laughs> okay, um, let's talk about you know we always love to hear the the origins of how these things uh, kind of come together, and it's a it's a it's finding the right similar minds, the creative creative types that you guys can work with. So how did the relationship start, and where did the yeah where did the the, the process begin for this journey? Yeah, we originally, another local here in Laguna Beach, uh, David Vanderveen actually introduced me and Nathan. Uh, so thanks to that, we, we started talking about an idea of making a film and doing something indie and from the heart. And, uh, and it was something I always dreamed of doing. Um, I've been involved in films, but never really made one. And, and he had some great ideas and visions, so I was so happy for that connection. So I have to ask too, but it just, it's funny how when I watch stuff now uh, in the surf space, uh, there's something about this, just it pops, it's got a certain look. Um, what, were you, what were you shooting with? And you know, was, there, was there a decision to, to make it look a distinctive way? For sure, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I had this thing called the Leetus 35. And it was, it was, I always say I'm on the right end of all the wrong luck. And what happened was, we were like one of the last movies to DVD ever. And a great story is we had a distribution company say, oh, we got to order 10,000 DVDs from you. It's going to blow off the shelves. And we're like, sweet. And we had all this press. Like probably three months later, a van showed up to my apartment with 9,000 copies of the DVD and they had gone bankrupt and just dropped pallets on my doorstep. I remember when this happened. And it, I was like, oh, this is awesome. <laughs> um, but so the Leaders 35 took like one of the first digital cameras and let you mount 35 mil lenses to the front, but it made it look like a cannon. So the camera was like probably two and a half feet long and you had to have these rails and the, the camera was so heavy it just bent over. The whole system was janky, but it, it made it look like that. No, the, the shots look amazing. <laughs> and uh, Eric, I know you, you know, when you're not here in Laguna, you also, there's, there's, there's aspects of your lifestyle that I would say that you're living the dream. You're getting out there. but. When you look back at these images, it, you know, this is like, I was talking to Hans, it's pre-Bara, pre-contest, right? Does it, uh, does it make you wax a little nostalgic in kind of a, maybe a sad rad way? I don't know. Yeah, I was, yeah. I was just there a couple of weeks ago, so it feels the same still, so it's... Uh, <laughs> tubes, tubes don't go out of style, do they? They don't at all, yeah. no. No, it brings back good memories for sure, though. It was a great trip, the waves were amazing. Good crew there. A little less crowded 12 years ago. Well, we were talking about Indo, back when Indo was fun, right? Yeah, yeah when there wasn't 20 boats on one spot. What about, let's, maybe a, a chance to just, uh, we have so many people here from Laguna, maybe t just talk about the love of Laguna and how, what it feels like to do something creative and to, to put Laguna in a good light. I mean, just tonight, I mean, guys like Greg McGillifree, um, I, I think about Dick Metz's story. I, I think about, you know, Kevin Naughton and Craig Peterson and all their adventures and kind of the stage that was set for us as Laguna surfers. Um, 
it didn't seem like an odd path in life from here to use Laguna as a launching pad to go out and see the world. Like for decades, we just meet at the Sandpiper after, and, and where did you go? Where did you go? Oh my God, Sly Dog just disappeared to Chile for three months. Frogger went to Fiji for four months. You know, Tristram's over in Greece, and that this was always just this launching pad. And so many people support this lifestyle and support this environment and love the environment here and with the, with the mountains and the ocean. And uh, yeah, it's just a great place to live and grow up. I'm so grateful. My mom and dad are here tonight. Thanks for raising me here in Laguna Beach. Yeah, to all the incredible parents. <laughs> um, it is really, the, it's that collective, that creative hub. And it's been interesting to watch, you know, you, you bring up the, you know, like with, with Kevin and like going back to Spider and, you know, these, all these generations when like Laguna was a little bit more loose. We, I mean, I think all of us would like to see it revert back to- Let's make Laguna weird again. Orange sunshine, <laughs> orange sunshine, please. <laughs> no, but it, it's, uh, it's interesting to see that it still has that power to bring like-minded people uh, with a passion for the outdoors and travel and but then to take that and then to channel it into you know s something such as a film that kind of which i was saying earlier i think it's timeless so i i i do think lost profits too has to happen i think it's yeah no i think i think it's more relevant than ever yeah like i yeah the, you, you look at the characters in the film and, and you guys only saw a snippet of the film but these characters are some pretty hans and frogger are like i would say the more standard ones that, that Conley is down in Mexico I don't know what he's doing you know Reef is selling all sorts of stuff like the, there's so many characters that came out of this movie and it and, and a lot of their stories are actually more relevant than ever especially for the youth I feel to see these they, they really just stand the test of time whereas it's kind of most people ebb and flow with what culture pulls pulls them into any one memory, maybe a question for uh, each of you, but looking back at this, that kind of maybe just brought something, like a favorite, favorite takeaway from this whole experience from start to finish. Um, one memory is we get out to Toto Santos and Nathan's just learning how to drive a jet ski and just sucks up our anchor rope like right into the jet. <laughs> First thing out, I'm like, oh my God, the waves are going off. He's done this. He's up in the kelp beds drifting in towards the brake line. But there was a number of debacles along the way that uh, come with every good surf trip. It's, it's always nice when you have a, a good memory. You can throw someone under the bus in the same, same breath. So. It was a good memory for sure because I, I swam under and I put my feet on the bottom of the ski trying to pull the rope out and it wasn't working. A good memory that I had, um, we'd show up every morning to the bar and wait at the gate at 7 o'clock and we'd always be the first car, Hans and I would be the first car waiting there and Snips would show up like 10 minutes later like, how do you guys get here so early every morning? And I don't really know why we were there, but we'd always beat Snip and he was so pissed off every time. He'd just be like, how did these guys get here? Because he wanted to be the first guy at the gate. And that's but. when he was in coach's mode, you know, <laughs> like he had the coach's hat, he was a Chloe. Chloe Dino, and Dino was here last night. You know, he's this big, but watching that footage, you're like, oh, it was, it was a cute Kaloe. Yeah. It's so great to <laughs> kind of go back in time. How about favorite memory for you? So mine was actually when we were recording the narration in Carla and Hans's living room, and Tom's sitting there on the couch, and he's reading, and he stops in this final sentence of the movie. And I'm like a, I love to write, and so I'm very opinionated about specific words. And he goes, I'm not gonna say the word pray. And I was like, I want you to say the word pray. And him and I had this discussion for probably 20 or 30 minutes about that word and what it actually meant. And the final line is, I pray we all smile and see. And it, in that, the final three sentences of the film encapsulate so much right now, I think with Tom's passing. And, um, and yeah, he said, it's a ride. there's a ride, life's a ride, you know? And no matter the good and the bad, we're all gonna look back and I pray we all smile and see it all was that message, right? And, and I think out of this whole film right now and where he's at and where the world is at, I feel like that was the most defining moment for me is him and I sat and talked about the word pray in regards to how we look at our life. Yeah. We can, I, I, I'm gonna say yes. <laughs> yes to applause. Um, well, as we've just witnessed, it's a beautiful film. We can't wait for Lost Profits 2. If Drive Through can go back out and do a, a second take, I think Lost Profits uh, definitely deserves, deserves a chance. So how about another round of applause for uh, Hans Hagen, Nathan Apfel, 
Eric Nelson.